Good morning and welcome to Midlands Arts Centre. It's a beautiful morning here and I'm back in the studio for the first time in 12 months and I've really missed it. It's lovely to be back. Thank you for joining me. I want to talk you through the whole process of painting these beautiful daffodils and irises that I picked from my garden yesterday. Um, and I'll, I'll talk you through the whole process as I go. For, to start with, I want to just point out that I'm working on Fabriano watercolour paper that I've primed with some pale umber acrylic paint. Um, I use this one by Galleria. And uh, it gives a really good seal to the paper. Obviously, being a watercolour paper, it uh, will otherwise soak all the water out of my acrylic paint. Uh, and acrylics dry very quickly anyway, so that's the last thing that we want. Um, on my palette, um, I've set out some colours already. I've got two yellows, two reds, two blues, um, a burnt sienna and a burnt umber there. And I've also got some of the slow drying medium. So I'm hoping that that will help to keep the paint mobile for a little bit longer. It is a warm day today and we've got the doors and windows open to create a breeze. So I'm aware that the paint is going to dry very quickly. So uh, I'll talk you through the whole process. And if you've got any questions, please send me a little message on the chat function here and I will try and check them out as I go. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is breathe because I can't paint when my head is kind of very busy. So I'm going to pause, I'm going to look at this, and then I'm going to make a very rough, loose sketch and try and get the painting, the shape of the painting down quickly. Um, I've got a pot of water uh, and a sort of fairly large brush here, uh, a large flat square brush. And um, I just want to pause and look at this and then I'm going to make up a mix of burnt sienna and French ultramarine blue. And it's going to be quite watery. And this is really the only stage of the painting where I'll put a lot of water in the paint. Uh, because I want it to flow very quickly and I just want to block in shapes here. Um, if you put water into acrylic paints, it tends to break down the plastic that binds them all together. Uh, and it makes the paint go dull as well. So I'm going to start off with a watery mix now, but then build it up and use pure acrylic paint later on. So firstly, we've got a very neutral background here behind the flowers. <coughs> and um, I just, I'm squinting at the arrangement and I'm looking at where this, there's a dark crease that comes down the back and I'm going to put more blue in there because I don't want it to be too brown. And I'm standing well back from the easel um, and holding the brush loosely at the end. And I'm squinting to see the darkest shapes. There's some folds in the fabric here. And what's nice is the way we've set this up is that the flowers are casting shadows onto here, onto this backdrop, make it a bit bluer. So I'm just squinting away, looking for darks and lights, and there are light flowers against dark background here. Everything I do at this point is just speculative. I'm just trying things out, um, and I can correct and develop the painting at any point. I keep it kind of loose and open like this for a long time. So if I find any faults, any problems with my composition, sometimes it's, you know, the vase doesn't fit in or the flowers are going all off the top or something, then I can still change it. So there's no reason to feel afraid, nervous about what's happening at this point because um, it's all going to be worked over. I'm mixing up more of this runny mix. And... I'm avoiding putting things dead central. I've put that join between the two fabrics just over to one side. I've got a square format here. This is 16 inches square. And I don't want the vase to be too central. I'm going to just put it about there. The other crucial thing, I'm calling it a vase, but the other crucial thing is when you're painting like this, try to think in terms of shapes rather than things. So rather than thinking now I'm painting the vase or now I'm painting this petal, you know, think of it more as a yellow triangle or um, an area of dark or light or whatever and try and think of it in abstract terms. And that way you keep a more um, 
open view of the drawing of the thing. It makes the drawing easier because you're looking at the negative shapes. It, um, they become as important as the positive objects themselves. Too much brown. So I'm, I'm constantly sort of striking this balance between the brown and the blue. I don't want a strong blue and I don't want a warm brown. So I've got the horizon lines here and then there's this grey sheet coming across there which also helps to make a more dynamic composition there. Sheet of um, sugar paper. So I'm just standing back, that looks okay. Um, over this side everything is quite light uh, apart from these green strappy leaves going across and a little bit of shadow there. Nice green. Let's have a look, see if anybody's with me. Oh, generally on my own. <laughs> it's fine just to say hi. <laughs> Let me know you're there. Uh, right, so here there's dark behind the glass and it's dark in the glass too. I'm, I'm almost doing like a tonal underpainting here. But it does, it gives you the shape of the picture very quickly. It's uh, like a road map, you know, so I'll be able to see what I'm getting very quickly. I love this bit here. There's, I think this is going to be a key part of the painting. There's a lit, you know, well illuminated flower head there. And it's standing against the shadowy grey cloth. And here too, so this one is sort of looking out. It's almost like they have little faces, these flowers, that kind of look in different directions and it gives them lots of character. So just mixing up paint as I go. Uh, if this was an oil painting, I'd have the luxury of making the colours, blobs of the colours that I want to use ahead of starting work on the painting. But with acrylics, you've got to mix as you go, pretty much. And um, so, yeah, kind of thinking on the, on the hoof a little bit. So I'm just starting to find the darks and lights between these flower heads. A little bit of shadow in there. And then those leaves. That's one comes out of the vase that way, and one goes that way. It's almost like sketching, really. It's just like a preparatory sketch, but I'm doing it on the prepared paper instead. I'm just feeling my way. You think of this like a piece of clay you can add and take away. With acrylics, you can just keep painting until you get what you want. You know, if anything's wrong, you can just go sh almost straight over it. They dry so fast. Um, so there's that one there. I'm just sort of plotting out these shapes and then the grass, grassy kind of leaves come at the top. And that there. Okay, at this point, I'm going to just pause. That's there, that's over here. And just have a look at what I've got. Uh, because it's all very well squinting at it, but you also need to step back and just have a look at the whole shape of the, the work. Yeah, that's okay. It's quite a nice movement through there, I can see, as I step back. So that kind of draws your eye up through in quite a nice way. So we'll go with that. Uh, so next, I think I want to build up the mid-tones. And... Um, Mix up some grey. So I'm going to start again with the burnt sienna uh, and the um, French ultramarine mix there. But I'm going to put in what I've got here. Rather than using titanium white, I've got a mixing white. Um, and it tends, it's just a little bit less chalky. Titanium white can make your paint go a little bit kind of grey and chalky looking. It's got a lot of blue to it. 
Uh, and for these mid-tones, I want to kind of keep them uh, rich looking, not dry looking. So I'm going to just add a little bit of that and um, get that in. It's fairly dark. You do need to kind of put the paint on to see what you've got. The, um, the mixing white is... It doesn't whiten as uh, efficiently as titanium white. You've got to use a little bit more of it. And it is kind of transparent, but I like that. I think I like the subtlety that gives. So I can just... There's a little bit of the darker paint in my brush. I don't mind that coming out. But I can just lighten that a little bit, and it's subtle, and the, the tones I've got underneath are just showing through a little bit. That's a Winsor & Newton mixing white. Um, most of the paints I'm using are Winsor & Newton. Um, I've got some Jackson's titanium white there, which seems pretty good. I'm sort of using that for the... Well, I've only just started using it, I should say. And I think it seems pretty good. I think they're a good brand. Uh, so, I want to get a bit of that up here too. There's quite a lot of light on that back there, but I can add more of that in later on. This is um, a hog hair brush. Actually, I want to rinse it out, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, it's a hog hair brush, it's quite a stiff bristle brush. And being a flat brush as well, it's quite good for just laying on a lot of paint. Um, I think next I'm going to get into these greens here. Um, with acrylic brushes, while you're painting uh, with acrylics, don't lay the brushes down full of paint. I've rinsed this one um, and I've blotted it on my rag and I'm just going to lay it down until I need it again. Um, if you don't rinse them, they, um, the, the paint will dry in them and it will wreck the brushes very quickly. Uh, but and I'm just moistening that one. I want to paint with a damp brush but not a soaked one. But if you don't leave them standing in the water either because everything's wet and horrible then. So I um, make the brush moist, just kind of dampen it take most of the water off so I'm not soaking my paint full of water and uh, then I'm going to mix a green I think I'll start with a dark green and I'm going to use French ultramarine again and I'm going to warm it up a little bit with more of the burnt sienna so my, my colours are kind of all working together um, you know with a common kind of base to them and it should help to tie the whole painting together as it develops. So that's a nice rich bluey dark green um, that I can just start to get the darkest areas in. I'm holding the brush, I call this a handlebar grip, but um, quite loosely with my hand on top of the brush. It's not a pen grip at this point. You might want that later on for detail, but at this point I want to keep everything quite lively and uh, you know, active kind of brush marks. So I'm holding the pen loosely, the paintbrush loosely and um, just laying it on its side a bit to get these marks in. Um, I'll mark in that one. What also is nice, I'm going to use a little bit of the um, slow drying medium. Um, if you can put the brush on and kind of twist it to describe leaves, so you kind of turn it as you go. Um, do all sorts of interesting things and lifting the brush off as you stroke outwards is um, a good way to get a mark. I'm always striving to sort of describe as much as possible with my brushwork with as little effort. Obviously I'm going to be putting the background in around these so the edges aren't too important really I'm just trying to get them in a little bit more of the stay wet medium. You don't want too much medium in it. Um, about a third medium to two thirds paint um, because uh, it, it really, it makes the paint very gooey and it doesn't dry, it takes ages to dry, as you can imagine. 
Uh, right, and then I'm going to lighten it a bit for the... So that's, I'm adding the medium cadmium yellow to my green mix, and I'm putting more of this mixing white in, and I'm using the same brush. I want it to be slightly more yellow there. These stalks are kind of light in the water here. And just put them in roughly because I don't want them to have hard, sharp edges. You know, they're, they're blurring in the water a little bit. Uh, for these little bits, I can rest my, I'm resting my little finger on the paper just to kind of give a bit of a grip, uh, balance. Right. Um, so I'll put a little bit more of that in. The, the vase is almost full of stalks here. There's a little bit of green there too. Um. Oh, comments. Oh, hello Beatrice. <laughs> Lovely, and Amanda. And Roy, fantastic. Lovely to see you all. Thank you for joining me. That's really nice. Lots of familiar names there. I'm looking forward to seeing you all back here. Um, Mac is hoping to, uh, hoping to open again um, at the end of May. That's not set in stone yet, but hopefully we'll all be back for our classes for the end of the summer term. Um, so I've rinsed that one and I'm going to lay it aside and I want to now... Uh, I think I'm going to get the the flowers marked in. Um, so I'm just making the brush damp again. And I'm going to use a bit of titanium white, I think, because I need to cover my underpainting here. The, um, the pale umber um, underpainting that I've got is great for getting rid of that horrible stark white background. So any gaps that I leave in the paint aren't going to be a white void, they're going to be this kind of buff colour. So they'll be a kind of lively, useful part of the painting. But it does mean then that for your higher, your lighter tone of values, uh, you need to add a bit more white. So I'm just, this is quite lemony, but I'm not too worried at the moment, I just want to get something in. I think, I'm a firm believer actually, that acrylics get better the more you layer them. So if you can um, build them up a bit, you get more subtlety with them. So start loose and then keep going back in till you get what you need. Um, you know, refine and refine as you go. And um, where you stop obviously depends on how polished a painting you want. I like mine quite loose and impressionistic, I guess. I can use this. I'm looking at this flower, which is uh, that one there. I'm looking at this one in profile. So the trumpet shape is going that way. And if I lay the brush on its side, I can give it that kind of frilly edge with the brush. Yeah, kind of squiggle it around. Uh, and there's a petal there. And just putting in light areas where I can see that's a lovely kind of buttery, creamy yellow. Now over this side, uh, what's interesting is they are, the flower heads are not covered in light like this. They're sort of looking away from the light. So it's, it's a yellow, but it's a darker yellow. This is when things get more complicated. So I've got my <laughs> yellow colour, which was my medium cadmium yellow uh, and I'll put some I think I'm just going to put the mixing white in with it and a bit of the burnt sienna and I can look at my colour I've mixed now so I'm having a guess at what I need for these flowers here um, and I can hold the brush up against it and it's obvious it's far too orange it's warm and orange but I hold it up to the flowers I can see where that mix needs to go 
to get the right tone. So at the moment, it's far too warm. So if I put in, probably a bit dark too, I'm putting in some more titanium white, which helps to cool it down as it's slightly bluish. And I'm going to put some of my cobalt blue in. And I'm going to hold that up and have a look. Oh, that's pretty good. Can you see that on the camera? If I can line it up, you can see how it compares. Um, that is a really good match for the darker areas of those flowers. So that's um, medium cadmium yellow, titanium white, a little bit of burnt sienna, and cobalt blue to cool it all down. And then these are kind of the supporting act at the back here um, because they're sort of, they can be simplified a bit. Um, those ones here especially, I think. This one obviously is the big kind of star here, but um, those ones I can play down a little bit. This is lovely here. Kind of draws you in, I think, the way this one looks like that. Um, of course, my mix is drying on here. I'm going to put a little bit of the Stay Wet medium in it because it's a useful colour and I want to keep using it. So, that like that. So, it's a kind of greeny, bluey version of the pale daffodil colour. I'm putting a bit of it on these petals too because they are they're actually a little bit transparent and they've got a little bit of that too going on. James is liking the mixing white. I think it was probably you who got me into it. Roy, sorry, Roy. Um, Roy is James. Always talked about how useful this was because it's not as cold as titanium white. Uh, okay, I'm just wondering, I'm asking myself if these flowers are big enough. I think they could be a little bit bigger. So just spread them out a little bit more. Um, okay, and that one can be bigger too. Now, I think, I'm just going to pause and have a look again at that and see what we've got. Okay. Um, I'll go for the, the lovely purpley colour of the irises. They've suffered a bit. They looked a bit fresher than this when I picked them, but it doesn't really matter too much um, because uh, they're really there for colour and interesting shapes. I don't mind if they're fresh or not, really. Um, they're still that wonderful colour. And I'm taking... I'm going to use cobalt blue. It's a little bit... I think, yeah, I'll use cobalt blue. It's a little bit more uh, softer than the the um, ultramarine. So I've got cobalt blue and I'm putting a little bit of alizarin with it um, to make a purple. And then I'm going to add, um, I think I'll try the mixing white, but I know they are going to need a bit more lightening, I think. But we'll try that for a start. I'm using, this palette I'm using is a bit niche. It's, um, I got it from a stationery place and it's a, a clipboard thing. You're meant to keep A4 paper in it. So you can store your paper in it and then clip it, uh, a sheet to the top. But these make a really good palette and you can turn it into a stay wet palette with um, kitchen roll and greaseproof paper on top. You know, you wet the kitchen roll and put greaseproof paper on top. And then you can put the lid on to keep everything clean. They're not quite watertight, but they, it does help. Um, and I quite like being able to put the lid on the palette uh, in case I have to pause or whatever or come back to a painting later. So it will keep it just slightly wetter. Uh, with the oil paints, it works really well because you know, they, they stay wet for a long time after you've put them out. Okay, so this, that's quite a good mix, actually. So that's um, the... Cobalt blue, 
mixing white and a bit of um, alizarin. Alizarin crimson. Okay, so now these lovely wiggly shapes. See, I don't mind if they're wilting really because they just wiggle more and it's so lovely to paint these organic shapes. And there's a really dark looking purpley one. I'm going to use a bit of ultramarine for that towards the back. So this is ultramarine with the lizarin here. Put that in back there. Okay, and then I think what I need to do next is put the, the light in over here. So I'll rinse that out. Uh, hi Sharon, I'm glad you're enjoying what I'm doing here. Louise, hi Louise. Why did I choose that colour for the paper? Actually it was an idea I got from a painter I love called um, Heidi Jo Summers. And uh, she used this underpainting colour. Um, it's, it's kind of neutral, it's sort of warm. Um, yeah, it kind of gives everything a slight warmth, I guess. Uh, and it kind of doesn't matter. I mean, I've seen people start with just any kind of old paint smeared over um, the paper. But it, it's sort of easy. It just You can buy big pots of it. And, um, yeah, and I've been doing that for a couple of years now, and I really like using it, I think. And as you can see, where I've got gaps now, so there's lots and lots of gaps in the background and between the flowers, that colour is working quite nicely. It's actually interacting with the colours I'm putting on. Uh, and, and to my mind, I think that's sort of sitting there being quite useful. And if I'd never paint over them, I think it will look fine. And there's quite a few of my paintings, if you have a close look, uh, where you can see that colour coming through. Uh, now, I want to... I'm squinting at this. And this is really important. I'm squinting at my setup and I'm looking for where the lightest part of the subject is. Um, it's... I don't know if you can see this, hopefully you can. Um, even though the flowers are stood, you know, they're almost white flowers and they're stood in front of a white sheet and partly on a white box, the light here, the lightest part of the subject, is the reflection of the spotlight here uh, on the glass. Uh, that's bouncing back in this very pure white. The other surfaces, you know, the cotton sheet and, and the painted box, aren't that shiny, so they're not reflecting quite as much light back as the hard glass is. So what it means is when I paint the background and the box, I'm not going to use pure white. Um, I'm going to just tone it down a little bit, and I've got to decide how I tone it down um, for my next step, really. So I think... What I might do with the sheet, I think the shadowy areas of the sheet, um, where the ripples are in it, the folds, um, I'm going to use a similar colour to what I used on this grey sheet. So they're kind of tied together. Um, and for the box, I'll look at that in a minute and see what works. So I've got the wrong brush. Uh, and I'm going to use... Um, this is probably, I think it's... Yeah, number six. This is a Georgian... Is that Dale Rowney brush? Um, and so I'm going to just wet it, wet it and dab it, and then uh, this is cobalt blue with burnt sienna. Going to need quite a lot of that actually, so I'll put quite a bit out. And then, so I'm making up a patch of colour, this grey. And greys and neutrals are, are wonderful things to sort of consider, really, when you're painting, because they, they become foils for the rest of the, thing, the stuff in the painting. Um, so they give the other colours something to play against. That's quite greenish, so I'm going to put a little bit more of the burnt umber in. And then perhaps I'll try some French ultramarine. Uh, and some mixing white. And I'm going to use the, some of the stay wet, slow drying medium. 
as well. Still slightly green, so I'm going to go with more of the, try that, more of the burnt sienna. Uh, probably too dark, actually. I'm going to put some titanium white in there because it's not that heavy. Okay, and then there's a crease, well, kind of fold there, and then it comes out from there to, and down behind this leaf here. And again, I'm doing that handlebar grip, so I can, I'm using the side of the brush a lot here, um, sort of scuffing the paint on. And the nice thing, I've got this Fabriano watercolour paper, use any tough paper, thick paper, um, but the Fabriano has a watercolour texture to it under my underpainting. There's some of this colour in the vase here, so I'm going to put that into... Uh, so when I scuff the brush on its side, it's just picking up and scuffing over the texture in the paper. Uh, and I really like that. It's sort of building up some really lovely, lively marks in there. Um, and I find the paint just slips around a little bit easier on this surface than on a canvas or a canvas board. Um, yeah, I can sort of drag the paint around on it. Right, now I'm going to add mixing white to this to lighten it now. Um, but bearing in mind, it's not going to be white. I'm going to put some titanium white in, just lift it a little bit more. But this is all going to be a slightly not white. If you look at the um, paintings by Cezanne, Cezanne still life paintings, uh, he did wonderful things with white cloths. He would often arrange you know, fruit bowls and that sort of thing on um, white tablecloths. And then find such wonderful colours, you know, where the cloth was being affected by the sunlight or the shadows or whatever. And um, so, you know, it's amazing how much interest, richness you can get into white fabric. So this is still, I hope it's, um, I hope you can see that, that this is coming through as a kind of soft grey, um, kind of a rich grey. How are we doing for time? So 35 minutes in, that's pretty good, I think, just getting it covered up. And got to get that down in between those, uh, the flowers and the petals here. That's a bit too white, so just add a bit more of that. So I can just push the paint in between the flowers and leaves here with the tip of the brush. And like I say, none of it matters. None of the edges don't matter. If I go over anything, it doesn't matter. Um, it's just getting something down that you can work with. Um, and again, just looking at these shapes. And it's, it's, what's lovely here is the, the purpley flower stands out against the sheet there. Um, just need a little bit more. It's, it needs to come down there. So every time I go back now, I've almost covered the whole surface now, and every time I now revisit any of this to kind of develop it, I'm adding sort of richness to it. It will become more subtle, 
and um, the colours will become richer as I go. And there's also light down here, but just squinting at the box edge there. Uh, might go slightly warmer there, I think. Let's see, Let's see what I can make there. Um, the light is falling on it. That's probably an LED light. It's not, you know, an old-fashioned light bulb would cast a lot of yellow on it, but I'm going to make it slightly creamier. I think we'll try and see. Um, I put a touch of the cobalt blue in, just so it's a kind of light, but not hopefully not too harsh white there but it's whitish because we're going to put the pure white on the vase this subject is um, uh, very popular it was a popular subject with the Scottish colorists um, still life groups, flowers and um, interior sort of subjects, interior views. Uh, and this demonstration is part of this um, exhibition of my students' work here um, that was inspired by the Scottish colourists. Uh, I wrote a project. Um, before the lockdown, we did a project on the Scottish colourists here for three months and they produce some wonderful work and the exhibition is going to be up I think all this year or most of this year now, uh, long overdue as you can imagine and um, <laughs> the work looks great, it looks really really good so if you, know, if you come to MAC when it reopens do come upstairs and have a look at our exhibition um, because uh, I'm very proud of it, it looks really good. Um, okay, that's, I think that's all kind of happening a bit. I'm going to stand back and have a look at that. Good, okay. So, um, what I'm going to do, I think, is get into these mid-tones again, revisit the mid-tones. So, um, I don't know which brush is which now, so we'll just have a guess. Um, I want a slightly smaller brush. And I'm going to use, what I try and do with my palette, you can't do it entirely, but it, you know, it's good to have aspirations. Uh, I have the pure color around the edges, so each blob is the pure color straight from the tube. And then I try and take from the color without adding color to it. So I go to it, I don't know where that came from, um, with, it's better, um, with a clean brush. And I want to make, I want to make this, grey here uh, and it's more of it up there as well um, so what I'll do is uh, start with French ultramarine I'm going to bring it back to that patch where I was doing this earlier so kind of dab off the paint and then pick up from the next blob go back but I kind of nip it off the side rather than sticking the brush into the middle of the blob um, I take the brush from the edge of the blob and make a new blob in the middle of the, um, the palette technical term blob uh, and then from that blob um, I can then take a bit to one side and lighten it a bit if I need to or I could take a bit to the other side and add more of another tone so I could have more blue to it to cool it down if I wanted a version that was cooler I'm going to use some titanium white because I know I need to lift these mid-tones here um, no. still quite dark I need to get down in here actually to so I'll just lighten it a little bit more um, and go between these leaves a little bit and there's some of this down here too in the glass So I'm just looking for where this sort of mid-tone will go and I'm taking it from different parts of these blobs so I've got this sort of dark and light versions of this. 
uh, available to add as I need them. And that's quite dark through here. I've got lots of different brushes now. I've been collecting them for so long. Um, this is a Pro Art Sterling brush for acrylics or oils. It's um, an artificial fibre, nylon fibre, bristle. Uh, and they've been really good. I've had them for a long time. Um, but I'm also using bristle brushes more now. So I've got um, some of those by Winsor & Newton. Um, so it depends partly. I like the kind of rough look that I get with the, um, the bristle brushes. Um, but sometimes I like a more, like this is giving me more of a linear mark because it's a round ended brush. So it's just a different kind of, more like drawing really, different mark. Um, I think I want to go slightly warmer over here. I can see the warm light falling on that grey um, of the cloth is quite nice. So I'm just adding a bit of cadmium yellow to my mix and lots and lots of blue to keep it in that sort of grey area. Um, I'll try mixing white. Not quite light enough, so I'll start again. Um, and I'm going to use my flat brush again. So I put some titanium white in there and some of the slow drying medium. Um, I've got a little bit of burnt umber there. I might add that too, because that's quite good for greys. That's giving warmth too. That's good. Uh, yeah, that's, that's good. The, the tonal values of your subject are so crucial to the whole thing. It's not just about colour, it's, um, it's understanding you know, what's happening to the colour that, in that light or in that place. Um, and how all those tonal values work together in the painting. Um, so this mid-tone. When I squint, you know, there is light on this fabric up here. Um, but otherwise, it's forming quite... That's good. That's just a bit of titanium white added to my grey. So if I lighten this area up here, and, you know, it's higher up, it's got the, the spotlight on it, full on, uh, that will kind of add to the richness of the shadows down here. Uh, and create space too, I'm hoping, because this daffodil really stands out uh, in front of that lighter grey. So I'm just mixing up a little bit more. So this is the burnt umber, uh, titanium white, and a little bit of the, oh, too much of the um, ultramarine blue. That's quite good. I hope you can see that, um, and I'll put a little bit of the medium in it too. And then, oh, that's a bit cool. When you put it on, it's all very well what it looks like on my palette, but when you put it on here amongst all these other colours, and with that kind of slightly warmer underpainting too, the colour can look quite different. So that looks really blue now I've put it on there. It doesn't look blue on there. But there it's starting to look too blue, and I want this more sense of a, a warm light falling over here, so I don't want it to be blue. Um, so I'm going to put a little bit of the cadmium yellow in. Hopefully that will help. Yeah. And with this flat brush, I can just lay the paint on with vertical movements. Hold the board steady. And then... Um, need to get that around there a little bit. A 
can just, I can sort of find, I'm finding the daffodils in here as I paint the background, sort of by omission really. Uh, and that comes down there. As I move, obviously I'm stepping back and forth, I get slightly different views, so uh, I've got to decide just where all these elements go. So I do that. I do like that purple one against the, the light background. So we'll take that across there a bit. It's a bit of a mantra of mine now a days. Uh, that this is about creating a painting. It's not about slavishly copying what's there and trying to make it like a photographic copy of what is there. It's about creating a painting that has its own language and um, works within itself, looks like a thing in itself. And um, so I don't mind a bit of artistic license going on, uh, adapting the image slightly. So I'm just sort of tilting that gray line in the background a bit because I like the way it kind of leads up through. Not a big thing, but you know, it, um, it's quite liberating to look at it like that, you know, that it's, uh, it's up to you, you know, what the painting is going to be and how it will work. So there's a sharp corner there on the back of the box. And that's interesting there. That is this grey, kind of tertiary grey tone in the cloth here. And then the vase itself is kind of almost magnifying the grey. Uh, so, yeah, that's a bit lighter. And then the vase is darker against that. So if I take this up to that edge, make sure I've got that in, and little bits like that, you know, just pausing and trying to understand what it is that we're seeing and what's happening, can then bring a quality or a focal point to the, the painting. Uh, that's a really nice relationship. The, the colours are really pure and strong in here, in the vase. So when I get to that, that should, that's going to be what I'll try and achieve. Um, more depth, in a way, in the vase. Everything else, the fabrics and the, the paper here that it stood on, are all kind of matte, um, quite dull surfaces. But that vase is going to twinkle against those. Right. So I'm just lightening that paper a little bit now. Um, and it gets lighter over here. You can see I'm holding the brush a little bit nearer the ferrule now um, because I need to just get a little bit firmer around these edges. Okay. Right, and I'm going to lighten this part of it. In a way, I'm kind of setting the scene here because I know it's all about the daffodils and the, um, the flowers. But I want to make sure I'm kind of creating the right place for them to be in when I get back to them. It's kind of, you create an environment with the painting where, you know, good stuff can happen. Uh, you know, those flowers are going to be enhanced by what I do back here. So I'm just coming up with a softer, lighter grey. Put a little bit of that. I like the burnt sienna, uh, the burnt umber in this um, for the greys, and that just the darks and lights there are just bringing some three dimensions to the the fabric in the background. With a 
bit of the medium mixed in too. It helps it to spread a bit. And then bring that down. And put that around the flowers there. sort of glaze over it slightly there just to soften some of the roughness in that fabric this is drying almost as soon as I put it on you know it's very easy to work over it um, okay with this flower it's kind of going that way so I just cut into the edges a little bit and it's almost like redrawing it Uh, you don't always have to wash your brush either, you can just sort of dab it on your rag. I always keep that handy like that, so I'm not having to hold it, but it's an interesting look, but functional. Um, right. So, I'm trying to make up more of the kind of mid-grey to take down here. There's some through there. and just defining the shapes of the flowers a bit. I'm kind of painting them, but not painting them. Just defining their edges a little bit. And just trying to see them as shapes, you know, kind of wiggly shapes. And I'm looking at the spaces between them too. Spending a lot of time on the background. I am aware of spending a lot of time on the background, Beatrice. <laughs> uh, it will pay dividends in a minute because uh, I want to get the shadows in for a start, um, but then the flowers are going to be standing out against that. I'm mixing uh, ultramarine blue and the burnt umber here. Uh, for this, probably a bit dark. Nope, lighten it a bit more. Just taking it to the edge and lightening it a bit, but just to kind of get the shadowy thing. Shadows always have soft edges. Don't um, don't try and draw them. They're just there, softly. And I can't get the right colour. Let's try that. So I'm mixing my blues and browns together to try and get a useful shadow colour. Actually, it's interesting, the comment about the, um, the background. The, um, the great thing if you do it early like this is that you don't have this awful situation of having to tuck it in around beautifully painted flowers later on. Um, you know, the temptation is to dive in and, and you know, really get... Um, absorbed in painting beautiful flowers but then you know they're in a void until you paint a background and also the background that you put around them will affect how they look so if you do the background first the flowers can go over the background but the colors that I mix for them I know will work with the background um, it's kind of getting that job out of the way in a way. Right. The other thing you can do with the backgrounds, and I've done it in a lot of my still life paintings, is um, incorporate the colours from the still life into the background as well, as if the colour's bouncing off, you know, and I think there's scope with this arrangement for having yellows and purples kind of bouncing around onto the fabrics. Um, which, you know, maybe we'll, we'll do a bit of that later on. Um, so, you know, the, they can kind of spread out from the flowers, the colours. Okay, I'm going to stop and just have a look at that again. 
Um, so just you know, quite a lot of grey needs to come in here. And there's a shadow coming off of the vase here. So I need a darker colour down here. Oops, a bit brown. <laughs> Thanks, Beatrice. I'm glad you can see what I'm doing. <laughs> there is a plan. <laughs> I do bang on to my students a bit about backgrounds. You know, you've got to pay attention to the stuff that's not the star of the show because uh, it all counts in the end. Just want to get this here a little bit lighter. It's quite nice how the light is passing around the back of the arrangement here. Just making up more of my grey colour. Every time I mix this background colour, I'm probably mixing it slightly differently each time. I'd be very surprised if it was identical to my previous mixes. But as long as it's kind of about right, I don't mind. It's, um, it makes for a more interesting painting. I don't mind that it's not uniform all over. And in a way, you know, life isn't like that, is it? You know, the light is bouncing around and... Uh, behaving differently and affecting the colours differently in different areas. All right. Good. That is better. Uh, oh, there's a bit of light down here in that. It's passing through the vase there. So we'll put that in. And coming down the back. So I'm just thinking about that back line there. The paper goes to there and then comes back through here. And that comes right up to there. Would you deal with the background in a similar way if you were using watercolours? Or would adding the flowers or anything else be more difficult? Uh, Amanda, I think with watercolours, um, it's a good idea to put a wash in, first of all. So in a way, yes, um, you would put... If I was painting this in watercolours, I might put a wash in of um, a kind of warm tone. I, always, I like yellow ochre as a watercolour wash because it goes very goldy. Uh, and then you can put the flowers on top of that. Um, but of course, with watercolours, you can't add light. So once you put a wash all over the surface, um, the only way you can add light to that then is to use gouache or Chinese China white uh, paint. Uh, so, you know, it, th then it's less of a watercolour. Um, actually, um, would somebody mind refreshing my... Water, is that okay? I've got a kind of grey soup here now, and I want to get these lovely... Is that okay? Sorry, thank you. Um, I want to get these lovely clean... Thank you very much. Um, about the same amount again, please. So I want a really clean, soft yellow here, and if I use grey soupy water, um, it's going to tint my colours uh, and make them muddy, so we don't want that. But um, So what I need to do next is, uh, I think, make up some of the... Inside the flowers, there's a lovely greeny yellow. And uh, thank you very much. That's great. Thanks. Um, brilliant. There is a greeny, rich, yellowy-green centre in there. And I want to get that in because that will give depth to the flowers there. Right. And it's 
Mm, okay, that's fairly close. So I'm holding the, the loaded brush up in front of the flowers. And um, just to check what I, I'm getting there. So I'm using titanium white and the medium cadmium yellow. I'm going to put that in first. And I'm doing this kind of loose grip again um, here. It's fairly light, but it's the right kind of colour, actually. So just tickling it in where it needs to go. And there's a touch of it over here, too. That's good. That sort of helps to place where the centres are. And um, I'm going to make up a green. I'll use the same yellow and a bit of the slow drying medium and make up a green with um, cobalt blue and that mid tone cadmium yellow. Um, it's just this barely visible in some of these. That one's very dark there. So we'll use uh, a bit more cobalt and a bit more yellow. See how that goes. Uh, and there's, I think there's a little bit of that also behind this flower head here. I've lost a flower head somewhere. So we'll put that one in there. I'm just sort of looking where else these colours come up, and they're also down here a little bit too. Using a little bit more of the um, stay wet, slow drying medium here, because I want it to flow a little bit, and um, it goes a little bit softer then. It's not such a harsh textured mark. It goes a bit of it smoother with the, um, the oh, it was too white, with the um, pure paint goes on a little bit rougher because it's drying all the time but with the medium in it it will flow a little bit more. I'll smudge it in with my finger too. And there's not much of that green elsewhere. Uh, so, only little touches. Um, okay. So, I want to get, <laughs> I've lost a flower back there. I need to get that in uh, rather than leave it out. And uh, so I'm going to make up more of the lovely pale yellow. Oops, too much. So I've got titanium white and this light cadmium yellow. It's probably... Oh, I'll try it. I think it may be too bright, but I'll try it. Yeah, it's too bright. Um, when you see it in the context of the painting, it's jumping out. So I'm just adding, I'm adding a little bit of um, the burnt sienna and cobalt blue, just to deepen it a little bit. Yeah. So give a sense of it being in the background a bit more. And then that's got... sort of coming around the back of the other flower from my point of view here. Make it like that. And then that can go in the same colour too. And just add a little bit more light to that colour. Oh, that's really good. So that's... Um, I'm putting titanium white into the darker cadmium yellow cobalt blue burnt sienna mix 
And uh, it's giving me a nice sort of highlight colour on here. So I can just hopefully pick out and I'll put a bit of the slow drying medium in to make it flow a bit and just pick out these petals with a bit more of that light colour. Um, and sort of trying to find other places to put that too. I don't want to get too kind of literal with this, but try and keep it lively. And I'm going to put the um, sort of frilly edge on this trumpet in. Just trying to sculpt it out of what's there in a way. And put some of that darker. I'm going to put some burnt sienna into a green mix. So I've got cobalt blue, the medium cadmium yellow, and some burnt sienna. And it'll make a deeper, warmer green for the centre there. I'm going to put some of that over here too. That's kind of giving them depth. Okay, um, going to, what should I do next? Um, I'm going to put more work on these pale leaves. Obviously this one's looking a bit clunky at the moment so we'll um, try and fix that. Actually I'll use a medium sized brush, not such a big brush. Uh, I think it's probably a number four, something like that. So just make it damp and then mix up. I'm going to put um, titanium white into this medium cadmium yellow mix. Hopefully that'll do it. And then this comes off like that. If I don't like any of these shapes, I can go back in with my background colour and tidy them up later. It is good to step back and just see the whole thing great thing about standing up to work if you can but you know if you sit to work then push your chair right away from the table and um, try to see the whole thing in one go and ideally always work with your your board vertical because um, then you're seeing the whole work at the same time um, and it's not being affected by the perspective of the, the top of the work going away from you and then bring that frill out a little bit more Just a little bit too yellow, so I'll just calm it down a bit with some of the blue, the cobalt blue. that's hopefully suggesting some of that transparency here. There is a little bit of shadow down in there. 
Uh, another trick, which is really good, um, if you're using yellows, for example, one way of deepening them, creating a darker version of them, is to put purple into them. So for each primary colour, you can add its secondary colour to it, its um, opposite secondary colour, to deepen it. So I'm adding <coughs> blue <coughs> sorry, with burnt sienna, as if to add a purple to it. <coughs> and it will give me a kind of shadow yellow colour. It's perfect, beautiful colour. Uh, without an awful lot of trouble. It's, it's a weird thing trying to find a dark yellow. Because um, obviously we think of yellow as a, a light tone. But that thing of darkening a colour with its opposite secondary colour is great. And it's like putting you know, red into green to deepen green or orange into blue to deepen blue and vice versa, obviously. Um, and I'll put some over here too, there's a bit of flower and shadow over here too. I think I just want to take that out to the edge a little bit more. So I'm using more of that yellow with purple added for these shadowy areas down here. So um, this one is quite shadowy there. And hopefully that's bringing them out a bit more three-dimensionally. So yellow with a little bit of cobalt blue and burnt sienna. Oh, it's a bit hard. Uh, I'm just adding it where I think it will be useful. Put more light on this one because it's looking a bit left behind so I'm kind of mentally I'm kind of working on the painting in layers in a way I'm kind of giving attention to everything in turn and sort of moving around trying not to get too obsessed with one part of it um, obviously the dafts are a bit of a star of the show but you know they are part of the scene so it's all got to work as a general rule of thumb, your viewers, people who look at your work, are going to focus on the bits where you've put the most time and attention. It tends to show when you finish a painting. Uh, so it, it's worth thinking about that when you're working. And that's a reason not to labour mistakes as well. Because if you do that, you're creating a lovely focal point where your mistake is, which is not what you want. <laughs> uh, right. Particularly with watercolours, not so much with acrylics. Acrylics are really forgiving. But with watercolours, if you make a mistake, it's best just to keep painting and hope for the best. Because um, you'll just draw attention to the, the mistake. Top tip. Right, I'm adding more of this slow drying medium to the yellow to try and make it flow a bit and I want to get some light on these flowers and I'm going to go back to the irises in a minute in a way um, I do this thing a bit like I don't know whether everybody else did this but you know when you're a kid and you save the best bit of your dinner till last I kind of do that with painting as well. <laughs> but, uh, so that I'm not doing the gleam on that glass until the last quarter of an hour or so, because uh, that's going to be the exciting bit. 
Do you like to stick around? <laughs> now, I'm going for purple for the flowers, um, the irises. Uh, could do with a bit more French ultramarine. The thing with acrylics, you can't put loads of paint out at once because it's drying all the time. Uh, so, you know, just a decent blob of whatever you're going to need and then add more later if you need it. Um, I'm seeing... Um, is that going to work? I don't know if that will. I'm going to add some alizarin. I've put burnt sienna in it. You can treat burnt sienna as a red, really. It's a bit, you know, halfway between a red and a brown. Um, so I've got burnt sienna, alizarin, and ultramarine blue there. Uh, I'm going to add a bit more blue and a bit more red of the alizarin. And then the titanium white part of it. And I can see, when you put the white in, you can see how purple the mix is. Which is quite useful, that looks okay. And then these are just looking right towards the light here, so hopefully that will... Well, that's quite good. Uh, pick up the light on these flowers. I can roll the brush a bit, and that gives some nice textures too. Just rolling the paint off the brush. <laughs> Brilliant. Glad you're enjoying it, Sharon. Hang in there. <laughs> to be honest, I still save the best bit of my dinner till last. <laughs> Delayed gratification. Right. Uh, and a bit more light there. They've got this extraordinary pattern inside them. It's almost like, uh, like a tiger stripey kind of thing going on in there, which I, I'm not going to get bogged down in, but I will try and suggest some yellow and white going on in the centre. So just kind of hint, it's all hints and suggestions really. Um, which brush? I'll go for, go for that one. I'm not sure what that is. Probably a number two, I'd guess. It's so old, it's worn off. Um, and so I'm going to so when you squint at the subject, and I'm squinting at this, and it, the squinting tells you what's important, and I, I'm hopefully it will work on your screens as well. If you squint at the subject that I've got here, the detail in those purple flowers is really not very important. There's a suggestion of yellow, a uh, little bit of yellowiness in the centre, and this sort of lighter purpley grey. So I'm going to just see if I can get some of that in. Um, it doesn't need to be too bright either, so I'm going to tint it down a little bit with the, the burnt umber, and that's just taking the brightness off the yellow, if I do that. Uh, and maybe a little bit more of the yellow, just so it's a kind of warm, deep yellow. And just see how that... Yeah, I've got a feeling it's going to jump out. That's no, not too bad. Um, make it a little bit darker. So burnt umber in yellow there and it's just it's just lovely uh, the, it kind of comes up the center of the flower and out onto the petal gosh 20 past 12. That went quickly. So I need to just... Yikes. <laughs> I need to hurry up. So I am going to now put some of that up here. And I will put the leaves in. 
and then put the, the gleam on the glass. I think something weird happens to time when you're absorbed in painting. It just disappears. Right. Actually, what I need to do for this is just support my hand a bit. So I've got a big paintbrush and I can rest my hand on it like a mild stick and then draw those lines down. the whippiness of these leaves kind of add movement to it all uh, and put some of the medium in there too to make it flow and then this comes out over here It's a really big one coming out the top here. Whoops. See, the longer you've got, the more you can kind of tweak and twiddle with these things, but there's something to be said for keeping it fast and loose. And in the water. Right, so the water has got this concentrated version of the, the grey from the background in it. So I'm using burnt umber and I'm going to put some burnt sienna in too, but just this kind of warm dark grey in there. This video will be going on YouTube uh, to watch later, so if you want to, you can sort of slow it down and revisit bits that I've done, um, if there's anything that intrigues you. Oops. Okay, and then, so that's just a bit darker there. And then, just sorry, a bit more dark at the bottom. I want to just warm that up a little bit. So it's just enriching these greens a little bit down here. Right, and then light. Um, I've got a little flat brush here, so I want to get... Um, I'm using a bit of those kind of grey colours, but I'm adding them to titanium white, because there's a lovely sweep of light coming through here. And it goes 
This isn't white, this is a kind of warm whitish color. And then you get the level of the water there. Again, it's, that's just a bit of gray, it's not, or gray green. Not very light there, but it's just reflecting on the surface of the water a bit. And there's a bit of that down this side too. I'm resting my little finger on the painting. Just to get that in, in one stroke, and a bit down here too. Uh, that's quite good, and then put a bit of that down there. And then I'll put the white on. Cutting it fine, but I think we're okay, really. Uh, actually, there's white and blue. I think there's a bit of daylight bouncing around in here. And blue over here too. It's the windows reflecting on the vase. I'll get a bit more. Here it's the spotlight. Is it? There we go. So, got there in the end. Um, I hope you've all found that really useful. Uh, you can look me up online if you want to follow me on Instagram. I'd be happy to see you there. And I hope you've really enjoyed that. Thanks for watching. Bye bye. <laughs>